Hey, Dara, how's it going? Fine. Are you ready for the shoot tonight? I'm just working on the script. Weather says it's supposed to snow. And what do you want me to do about that? Oh, come on. Don't be so grouchy. Grouchy? Grouchy? You come here and interrupt me when I'm working and distracting me from working on the script and I can't get anything done. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a special episode of The Download, presented by Microsoft Advertising. I'm Rachel Newman. And I'm Dara Sam. And this obviously is not the LA studio. <laughs> this is clearly not LA. Uh, we are on location in the gorgeous Banff, Alberta for the Cult Gathering, an annual business and marketing summit featuring some of the world's most forward-thinking, iconic brands and their thought leaders. These so-called cult brands enjoy fanatical love and loyalty, and they've gathered here to show us the secrets about how they've achieved this. Yeah, they have. And we actually get to sit down and chat with some of them. So coming up, I sit down with Sona Kosla, Chief Impact Officer at Benevity for the big interview. Sona will share her remarkable story with us and how brands can find their purpose to reach their full potential. And we also have our very own MJ De Palma speaking on her big keynote here at The Gathering about how brands that market with purpose are the ones that are gonna win that fanatical love and loyalty that we mentioned previously. Woo, a lot coming up. Dara, are you ready for this? Let's get amongst it. <laughs> Before we do that, for any more background that you need on what the cult gathering is all about, we put together a quick intro, so let's take a look. The gathering is a world-class uh, business summit that's held in Banff, Alberta. For those who don't know, it's, it's held in this castle that's 150 years old, nestled in, in the middle of the Canadian Rockies. The official description of The Gathering is it's a Forbes top-rated business and marketing event. And I'll use the term event and even conference very lightly. The Gathering now is just this really incredible group of people. And they always say, you know, it's not a conference, it's a feeling, it's a heartbeat. The thing that really encapsulates The Gathering is people who come together for a common purpose and a common cause. And that is to do good and to bring amplification to the people who deserve it. The enthusiasm we have from every volunteer that's here right on up to our incredible brands from our honorees, our emerging brands. It is pulling together a lot of blood, sweat and tears for sure of people being able to step away from everything that has happened to them over the past couple of years and I'll be back together again in person. There's a lot of power in that. It's a, a place where you can come disconnect um, from your everyday life, meet with people from all over the world and you come and learn from the best, biggest brands in the world. It's just a good time as well. We know that these brands are iconic because they're cult brands, right? That's the reason they're being honored. But it's really cool to see the people behind it and the minds and the hearts behind it because that's what really matters, right? These are brands and humans behind the brands that believe in that internal engagement and again, creating that true, true powerful bond and loyalty between their teams internally and between them and then consumers as well. The people that are coming here are stepping outside their comfort zones and they're coming to gather together. So to have this home and make people feel like they belong is just really special. So that's what I believe the gathering is for, for everyone, whether that's people in person or people that join us all around the world.
you know, Rachel, as far as business events go, this is about as cool as it gets. I feel like cool is a major understatement. I don't, I'm not even sure how to put this environment into words, but it has really been inspiring. I heard you had a pretty great chat with a special guest. I did. I, can you tell I'm so excited to talk? I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. I, uh, I was able to sit down with Sona Kosla. She is the Chief Impact Officer at Benevity, a Calgary-based software company that is helping the world's most iconic brands find their purpose to life. Sona is our big interview, and I'm really excited for us to take a look. Sona, welcome to The Download. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to sit down and talk about all of the amazing work you're doing um, for companies right now. Can you just start by explaining your role and what you do at Benevity and, and who Benevity is? Yeah, absolutely. So I am Chief Impact Officer at Benevity, which is a pretty cool job to have. And we are a software company that powers uh, the purpose programs of some of the most passionate, purpose-driven beloved brands. So what we do is essentially help them engage their diverse workforce in doing good, whether that's uh, volunteering or giving back uh, through donations or um, lending their skills to nonprofits. We also help companies embed social good into their customer experiences and customer engagement strategies. And then finally, we also help companies give money and product to nonprofits around the world. Wow, that's amazing. And before I get into that interesting title that you have, Chief <laughs> Impact Officer, I think we're all curious to hear more about that. What led you to get into marketing in the first place? I had to take a marketing course to get into my master's program. And oh, this, so this wasn't even, a, this wasn't a choice. No, it wasn't <laughs> a choice. I, so I went to take this marketing class. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this to get into this other program. And I went to one class and I walked out of the class and I was like, this is garbage. <laughs> I don't ever want to do this. And so I just decided to not continue the course and somehow I still got into my master's program. Uh, through my program, I had to do an internship and I said, I will do any internship except marketing. And then they put me in marketing. And then I realized actually marketing is kind of like the party in a, in a business and I was like, this is kind of actually fun. People are really lively and passionate. I think these might be my people. So I ended up staying in marketing and then I was asked to take on an actual marketing role, which I was like, no, 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 that's not my gig. And again, my boss said to me, he was like, no, you can do this. I know you can, you'll be great. And then I did. <laughs> so somehow I ended up here. When you hear the term chief impact officer, you almost immediately think, oh, this is impact outwardly right? Yeah. You're here to drive business impact, but instead it also, it almost feels like yours is more so looking inward. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we talk a lot about purpose and the reality is purpose is personal. Mm. We each have our own reason for being or reason for living or things that inspire us or motivate us. And they often come from, you know, um, experiences that we've had in our life. So they're, they're deeply personal. People don't just give back because they want to give back. They do it because they care about something. And so we've found that if you can tap into that thing that people are really passionate about, that they care about, yeah. you're going to actually engage them at such a deep level that is meaningful to them. And then when they get to do it at work, you're creating this deep bond because you're saying, what you care about, we care about. And we care about you and we want you to live your purpose at our company. And typically your brand purpose is all about what your company does as their core offering and how they add value to the world. But this kind of purpose is not that. This is about how are you empowering the purpose of your people and building a culture where people can live their best lives. The role of the corporation has really changed and especially in the last three years, right? Corporations, it used to be that you're gonna provide you with an economic you know, uh, outcome, a livelihood. Yes. So you can do whatever else you want to do in your own time. Don't, don't talk to us about that. Do whatever you want to do, but don't tell us. It's not that anymore. Work has become a place where you can actually live the impact that you want to have, the purpose that you want to have, and they're enablers and facilitators of that. We heard this, this term that has been thrown around for a while now, that culture eats strategy for breakfast. And it sounds like Benevity is flipping that on its head. Yeah, I, it's funny actually, culture eats strategy for breakfast is one of the mantras that our founder, Brian DeLottenville, used to often say. Ooh. And, and, and actually the way 
um, he and our original founders of Benevity started the platform was to engage people. It wasn't to help companies run their own social responsibility programs. And it was, it was to empower people to get engaged. And so we were like, if you can build a culture of engagement and a culture of goodness, you're gonna have all these other outcomes. Yeah. But here's the thing, you know, boards are now starting to invest much more in companies that have purpose, right? We know about ESG, environment, social governance. We know that companies that perform well on ESG tend to perform well in the market and business. Mm -hmm. And so you're seeing a lot of boards saying, hey, we want to see what you're doing on ESG. And it's a bit of a checkbox or compliance exercise or a reporting exercise. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily guarantee the cultural outcomes. So yes, you can check the box, but do your people feel that way? And are they going to advocate that way? And are they going to feel that engaged? And are they going to show up at work? And are you going to get the diverse talent that you want? And so we really say, it's actually, you got to start with your culture. You've got to be able to create those outcomes. And then you will get the ESG outcomes that people are looking for. If you fake your way to doing the right thing just for those business outcomes, I don't think you're going to succeed. It's going to be much harder. How much marrying d needs to happen with, with between data and marketing to really effectively tell a powerful story? A lot, but I think the reality is is that data is a supporting element. It's not often the driving element. Sometimes it is. So what I mean by that is instinctually you'll be like, I think this might be going on, or I think this might be an opportunity, or we should try this. And it's just an instinct. And then you try it and you gather data and you're like, oh, this is why it works, okay, now I, or this is how it works, or this is why it failed. And so data becomes feedback to me. Data never answers the question of why. It answers the question of what or how, but not why. Got you it. still need the, the, the instinct, the intuition, um, the knowledge sometimes of your market and your customers to really answer the why. I love that. It's really, really powerful. It has been delightful to sit down and talk to you. I could pick your brain for hours. The work that you're doing is truly impactful. Thank you so much for sitting down with us and, and we hope to have you soon again. So, oh, Thank you for having me, Rachel. Oh, such a good conversation. And Dara, after hearing about all of this, I'm curious to hear, what attracts you most to a brand? You know, Rachel, that is a great question. And it's one that I asked a bunch of people here at the gathering. We're here at the Cult Gathering Summit, and we're gonna ask some attendees what they value most in a brand. What do you value most in a brand? Experience, inviting me in. I'm Elian Dora, these shoes, they have an amazing brand. They do that well. What do you value most in a brand? What's the culture they've created? What are they putting out there? What are like what is their community and what are they doing for the world? I think what I value most in a brand is the brand being intuitive. I, I like when you can just get, you know, something out of the box or you, you, you open it up for the first time and it just works. What I value the most in brands is I want to make sure a brand stands for something. That's really important to me. Like, what kind of corporate soul do they have? Transparency. I think first and foremost, transparency really helps define the brand and it really gives me a sense of what I'm buying into. Community. I love when a brand has a community and a relationship with their customers. The biggest thing that I value is authenticity. I want something to be real. I want to know that they're going to be honest. I value motivation and ability to adapt to the changing world. Corporate social responsibility is a big thing. As a marketer, I have to say it's authenticity. Dara, that's a great question. It's authenticity. Belonging. Belonging. I love it. You can belong if you have community. Great brands build community. So this event that I'm at is called The Gathering. It's in, very intentional with the way that they named it. We need to gather. This event is really about showcasing the best work from the best brands who are doing their part in creating a better world. Yeah, this is great, right? <laughs> Getting outdoors is really important to, to me and my partner, and Microsoft allows us to decide how we would like to work. And so being able to work from wherever we're taking advantage of that. So we drove from Seattle through incredibly beautiful Canadian country and worked along the way. Look at that. I was invited to actually be the closing keynote of opening day. And when I learned of the order of which my keynote was gonna be placed, I, I felt super honored. Because thinking about 
creating a mindset to go into the rest of the summit was important to give people a message and a framework that allows them to connect authentically with the other humans that are here to do the same thing. I want to thank my company for all of their support in helping me pursue my passion. I'm really here this week because I have this passion for wanting to help people and organizations create incredible impact that can change systems to create really our best collective future. Because brands and companies have to play a role, I believe, in rowing towards a more sustainable future and a more inclusive future, not only for companies, but for individuals working for those companies. We talk at Microsoft about culture as the leading indicator of our future success. The people that come to this type of event, like the gathering, they're not here to just give you a business card. They're here to make genuine relationships that can benefit one another as human beings. Global consumers are four to six times more likely to trust, buy, champion, protect, and recommend companies with a strong purpose. My company actually has been supporting me and following my passion, and so it's led me to talk about the value of purpose and the purpose of values, and not necessarily carry out a company's purpose in a silo, but my own personal purpose. And there was this incredible moment for me is, don't work for Microsoft, make Microsoft work for you, is what our CEO had said at one time. What do you love doing? What do you do best? What creates value? And not just value for your company, but value for you. Yeah, so this keynote that I delivered, it was a, a new presentation because I really was inspired by marketing with purposes, three core building blocks of trust, responsibility, values, inclusion, and I wanted to focus on values. We heard a lot about inclusion and a lot about responsibility, but values is this kind of mystical, soft, gray area. And values rev the engine of our leadership principles. In order to actually deliver on your company's mission or purpose, you really have to have a culture that is 100% in. And that really starts with values. It's not just a company mission, it's laddering up every individual's personal mission. You know, what matters to you and have that be expressed in your work. It's really this two-part finding your purpose, you know, what you love doing, what you do well, and what creates value, and overlaying it on a Microsoft framework for impact, which is your individual accomplishments, building on the work of others, and creating opportunities for others to build on your work. And that really took us from a culture of super competitive people to super collaborative. And that has made all the difference. Wow, I am absolutely blown away. MJ is such an inspiring human being, and I think what I can't get over is how epic that band was. <laughs> right? I mean, that thing was amazing. Totally. Almost as amazing as her talk. Mm -hmm. And what really just stood out to me, aside from the fact that she drove from Seattle all the way here to Banff, was how she talked about this cultural shift from this culture of competition to collaboration. And I'm just, I don't know, I'm just so inspired by it, to be honest. So am I. I think that when you, at least for me, um, and I think I can speak for a lot of people, when you collaborate, you start to feel good. And when you feel good, you do good. And that just transpires into a lot of aspects in your life. So, and that is gonna be a wrap on this special episode of The Download here at The Gathering in Banff. I don't wanna leave. I wanna live in this castle. I wanna <laughs> stay here forever. So from everyone here at Microsoft Advertising, Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.